The sharp frost this morning's 17 minute view was the best for years. It's a lasting source of amazement that Neolithic man was able to construct a monument with such pinpoint accuracy. Because it was designed so long ago, and to think that somebody was here 5,000 years ago organising this, and to think we can come now and witness what they planned, that is a miracle. I think it must be as close to immortality as you could hope to get to build something and have people come along to watch it in perfect working order 5,000 years after you have lived. We're all familiar with the image of Orion the Hunter in the night sky. Now a new theory connects this legendary figure to the historical sites of Irish mythology. The High Man theory states that the ancient sites of the Boyne Valley were joined together by roads to resemble the shape of Orion. If true, this means the ancient people of Ireland had a sophisticated knowledge of astronomy. We already know they knew the precise movements of the sun from the way they built Newgrange. The discoverers of the theory have spent five years researching the sites and the stories behind them, and they believe their theory will stand up to the cynics. Where each place is has a story or a legend. And then one story talks about another place, which is in the figure as well. And to have that and the astronomy matching as well, well, it's too much of a coincidence. They would like now to bring together experts to help them move the theory on from being just a coincidence. I mean, archaeologists, for instance, don't generally have a good working knowledge of the stars and that's quite understandable in just the same way as many astronomers don't have a good working knowledge of archaeology so we're trying to combine the two in a way where um, we have to try and teach the archaeologists something about the stars and the astronomers something about the archaeology and, and bring the folklorists somewhere in as well you know the link to mythology comes from evidence that the high man image was the inspiration for the warrior Cúchulainn in famous Irish folk stories. These amateur researchers hope professional experts will come on board and back their theory. If that happens, it will be a long time before the legend of the high man is slain. The winter solstice, when the sun appears at its most southerly point, it happened at precisely 9.46 this morning. Misty December skies pulled the blinds down on the new Grange phenomenon. So stunning this time last year. At dawn, on the days either side of the solstice, if the weather's clear, the sun penetrates the passage grave and throws a beam of light along the chamber floor. Stone Age man built this miracle 5,000 years ago. Today, astronomers are trying to find out whether they set out to fix a solar calendar. New Grange is 500 years old in Stonehenge. So uh, Stonehenge has almost certainly been proven to have had an astronomical significance and was used as a solar calendar. So if it's proven or made extremely likely that um, Newgrange was used in a similar fashion, it will be the oldest, oldest known observatory in the world. Astronomers believe these Neolithic carvings at the doorway to the chamber bear a message which, if deciphered, could provide the answer to the Newgrange mystery. That's if 20th century science can match Stone Age wisdom. <laughs> A little further upriver is the best known of Ireland's prehistoric monuments, Newgrange. The cairn, 36 feet high, covers an acre of ground. The white quartz stone lends distinction to the monument, making it conspicuous in the landscape. The thousands of tons of material piled up to make the mound were attained by a continuous curb of large stones. The freestanding stones set some distance from the curb mark off the sacred area for ritual. Some of the curb stones are decorated with strange motifs. What can the imagination make of these decorations? You could choose to see a human face here, the goddess of death from the Mediterranean world, 
The mound is entered by a passage, 62 feet long, which leads into the burial chamber, where stone basins, carefully shaped, were placed to receive the cremated bones of the dead. The same strange motifs decorate the stones in the great burial chamber. There is little to tell us what religion inspired the Neolithic people who built this, or what was the form of their ritual. The corbelled vault over the central area rises stone upon stone to a height of 20 feet giving the whole interior the air of a prehistoric cathedral. The Neolithic builders constructed a roof box over the entrance to the passage. Professor O'Kelly, who excavated the site, discovered that during the winter solstice, around December 21st, the rising sun shines for a brief period through this box, and the shaft of light penetrates right into the back burial chamber. It is clear that the builders of this tomb studied the movements of the sun. What part it played in their religious ritual, we don't know. North in the Boyne Valley is a late Stone Age site. Along with Newgrange and Douth, it's part of a complex of passage tombs rated as one of the most important in Europe. It's yes, absolutely fascinating. And uh, this whole I've never curb, seen the car passes shifted Nuff at all. isn't open to the public, and for the last 25 years, Professor George Egan's been working here, patiently sifting his way through the deposits of 5,000 years. Uh, it's a very important site because it has produced a great deal of evidence about various phases of Irish archaeology. Uh, for instance, uh, the earliest phase goes back to the late Stone Age, around 5,000 years ago. But then in the in over the intervening centuries, even millennia, the site was utilised on several other occasions. And indeed, uh, now it was even still an important uh, site uh, down to the, uh, the Middle Ages. The main mound at North covers about one and a half acres and in the 60s two chambers were discovered at its centre. Since then work has continued in an attempt to learn more about these early inhabitants of the Boyne Valley. But North is just one of nearly 2,000 sites and monuments in County Meath recorded in the new inventory, an inventory that took two years to put together. About 400 of the sites are new, discoveries usually made through aerial photography. And for the compiler, these new discoveries have a special fascination. And for me, the exciting thing is to walk onto a site which isn't marked on any maps and perhaps known only to me, and to realise that I'm the first person to visit that site and recognise it for what it was uh, since the people who created it actually deserted it. And that, that is a thrill. But while major sites like North are being carefully investigated, others are being destroyed. In the last hundred years, about 30% have gone. Principally, I'd like to, uh, people in general to become more aware of the fact that these monuments are there and that they have a value uh, to us here in the late 20th century. They have a cultural value and a historical value, which we, the archaeologists, can't fully investigate at the moment, but which we would like to preserve for future generations uh, to investigate. If we let these monuments go now, a century from now, um, people will perhaps blame us for it, for that destruction. Paradoxically, the very richness of our heritage is part of the problem. There's so much there, it's difficult for the authorities to monitor what's happening. But if they do find the law being...
The fourth and fifth centuries were periods of fundamental change. Christianity had arrived in Ireland. There were those who compared the arrival of St. Patrick to the sunrise, compared his message to the rising sun that rose out of the east, warming the island with new belief. We know little with certainty about Patrick. The simplest story is that single-handed he converted all of Ireland. As a young slave, he had lived, some say, in Mayo, some in Antrim. When he returned as a bishop, one legend tells, he built his first church at Saul. Whoever he was, his tradition is strongest here in the Northeast. And some say, too, that Patrick herded swine on Slemish Mountain, a simple, localized beginning for a national apostle. The church at Saul today emphasizes the legend, a Victorian pastiche that copies ancient architecture, emphasizing the Christian continuity of the place. Modern memory pays reverence to ancient events. worship formerly given on the hilltops to the Celtic god. <laughs> 